Hi, Sarah here from Cinemativa, and today I am going to explain a real story of a six-year-old boy who fought in World War II. It's a Russian movie named Soldier Boy. I am sure you will love it. The movie begins in Russia, where a family of three is relaxing by a river. Sergei Alyoshkov, the youngest, brags to his elder brother and mother about being on top of a tree. When suddenly, German fighter jets fly overhead. The mother directs her children to quickly hide in the bushes. But the six-year-old keeps insisting on striking the jet with a slingshot. To everyone's surprise, he hits the jets and blows them to pieces. But when he looks around, he notices that his family has vanished. Sergei awakens terrified from his dream and calls out to his mother. Just then, someone knocks on his door. He runs towards it, assuming it is his mother but a neighbor woman comes in panicked. She thanks God for keeping him alive and informs him that his mother and brother have died. The little boy doesn't understand what she's saying and wants to stay in the house to wait for his mother. The woman tells him that the Germans have attacked them and that he should run away. Just then, some soldiers approach their home. The woman pushes Sergei to escape through the window, but she is killed before she can join him. The six-year-old is now on his own, without family or friends. As Sergei manages to escape the house, he notices his entire neighborhood burning behind him. He calls for his mother in pain, and runs away from there. After a while of running, he finds himself in the middle of the woods. Because he is lost, the small child begins to call for his mother to come and get him. That night, he stays in the jungle. The next morning, we see him drinking water from a river as enemy soldiers approach. Sergei quickly hides inside a tree's roots, knowing they are dangerous. When a snake appears nearby, he is startled but does not utter a word or run away. Sergei is terrified of the soldiers rather than the snake. The soldiers eat by the river and go away. Sergei then takes their leftover food and consumes it for the night. However, by the end of the day, the little boy is exhausted. He hasn't eaten anything in two days and has been walking aimlessly. He stumbles as he limps but does not stop walking. On his way, he comes across some wild berries and devours them. But just then, an explosion occurs behind him, taking him by surprise. The boy becomes dizzy and begins to see someone approaching him from behind. Despite this, he stands tall and tells the person that he has a rifle and is not afraid. He limps forward but soon falls unconscious. Two soldiers approach him while he is asleep. The scene shifts to a Russian army base, where Commander Kuznetsov awaits his patrol soldiers. They come in with the little kid who is injured and weak. When the soldiers claim to be on his side, the kid opens up and introduces himself. The soldiers laugh when the kid shakes his hand with the commander, suggesting he introduce himself too. The soldiers are affectionate toward the kid and circle him. They make him drink water and feed him. Even the cold commander takes responsibility for the child. A nurse named Katya dresses Sergei's wounds and is charmed by his personality too. The child requests that she draw a tank on his wounds because he aspires to be a soldier when he grows up. Even the wounded soldiers talk to the child and feel better. Sergei is fascinated by the commander's gun and his batch. The commander, too, answers all of the little boy's questions and lets him play with his honorary pistol after removing the bullets. Sergei shows him the tank drawn on his stomach and brags about being a soldier himself. The boy is recovering quickly. The nurse Katya requests that the boy stay with the battalion, but the commander refuses, claiming that it will be unsafe. He wants to send Sergei to an orphanage. The soldiers spend all their free time with Sergei. Throughout the day, he is visited by many soldiers they bring him food sent by their families from afar, and even let him play with their binoculars. One day, a soldier approaches the commander and requests that the boy stay with the battalion. The soldiers have grown a close connection with the kid, and think of him as their own. His presence lifts the burden of war from their shoulders. The commander, on the other hand, is adamant about sending the boy to an orphanage for his own safety. The next day, the enemies attack, injuring many soldiers. A vehicle arrives to transport Sergei to the orphanage. The commander breaks the news to the kid, 
and gives him a wooden honorary pistol as a gift. In turn, the boy hugs him, claiming that he is concerned for the commander's safety. The commander melts in his embrace and reconsiders his decision. He requests that Sergei remain with the soldiers as his son. That night, the soldiers look for little soldier clothes for the little boy, they are over the moon to have Sergei stay with them. The commander wakes Sergei up and hands him the clothes. He puts them on and runs around like a real soldier. The others begin to refer to him as their ill little soldier boy. While the child is running around, the Germans launch an air attack on the battalion. The soldiers quickly take Sergei to a safe location and fight the others. The number of injured soldiers is rapidly increasing. Sergei wants to contribute, so he brings water to thirsty soldiers. One of them asks him to read a letter sent by his family because he has a bandage over his eyes. The kid wishes to help but does not know how to read. He takes the letter and begins making up the contents, claiming that the soldier's cow is safe at home. When the soldier says he doesn't have a cow, the others encourage him to believe the story and laugh. He reads everyone else's letters in the same fashion and cheers them up. In the following scene, we see Katya and the commander talking. The two seem to be attracted to each other, but do not confess their feelings. Later, Sergei informs the commander that he is an orderly in the battalion and begins introducing himself as one. However, the boy witnesses one of the soldier stations being destroyed as a result of the attack. The commander teaches him to take his hat off to pay respect to the dead soldier. The next day, he insists on a mission from the commander and is assigned the task of distributing the letters among the soldiers. He completes his task efficiently and even makes the soldiers dance for him. The next day, Sergei ventures away from the base with his binoculars. When he notices someone's leg moving from inside a haystack while playing with it, he rushes back to the battalion and informs the soldiers of his discovery. The soldiers are skeptical but they accompany the boy anyway. When they reach near the haystack, they are alerted to see two German spies hiding underneath. The spies are arrested, and the kid is praised for his intelligence. The commander shows Sergei the legal documents for his adoption that night. He is now the child's legal father. Sergei knows of the commander's feelings for Katya, so, to repay his kindness, he takes him to confess to her. However, when they see her talking to another man, they incorrectly assume she is interested in someone else. The Germans attack the base once more. This time, Sergei lends his full support to the soldiers, by supplying ammunition to the soldiers in the front line. But the soldiers there command him to go back to the shed because it is too dangerous outside, when he arrives at the shed. He sees the commander and others in distress because the phone connection with the colonel has been lost. A soldier is dispatched to repair the damaged wires. Sergei pursues the soldier and discovers he has been fatally wounded. He asks the dying soldier how he can fix the wires, and does it himself. The connection comes back and more troops are called. Everyone's lives are saved by the six-year-old. Later, we see the commander and Katya talking by the river. Finally, the commander confesses his feelings for her and asks her to be Sergei's mother. Katya is delighted, but before she can say anything, a soldier approaches them and hands the commander a letter stating that they have been ordered to leave the base. The next day, all of the soldiers, including Sergei, leave for their new base. However, on their way, they come across a minefield that blows off some of their vehicles. The commander is hurt while the group's orderly, who Sergei was close with, dies in the explosion. He cries and hugs the commander. They continue their journey to their new base while carrying the injured. When they finally arrive at the other base, they meet the commander's leader, the general. He, too, is impressed by the kid's ambition and congratulates the commander on having such a bright child. The following day, their division is awarded a guard's banner, and so is the boy. He promises to save his country when the general gives him his batch. One night, their base is brutally attacked, and the commander is trapped beneath the ruins. Sergei cries for his father and tries to save him. He calls the other soldiers, who finally bring the commander out. The next day, Sergei approaches an injured commander, his hands were injured while attempting to save the commander. The kid is now an inseparable part of the team. He doesn't have a family beside them, and moves wherever they go in the war. The movie ends as the regiment is seen moving to another base. A voice in the background tells us that he even fought in the Stalingrad battle and made it to Poland with the soldiers. He is now known as the world's youngest soldier, and the legendary story of his bravery has been shared with the entire world.